Hello, everybody. This is Joe DeLoyer, and welcome to another episode of Analog Man Cave. Today's episode, uh, something in the air. <laughs> I see some people out there who are uh, complaining about 1D&D. &D. All right, man. This is your first rodeo, first edition change. I'm here to help you, okay? Been through it many times over the past almost 40 years. All right, so from the older editions to the most current edition, I played them all, and I'm here to help you out and maybe throw you in a uh, throw you a bone here, I'll send you in a different direction, okay? Because one D and D, um, five point five six E, whatever you want to call it, it's a change that's happening now, and it's not for everybody. There's a there's some people who are sort of you know discontented, and they want to try something else, right? That this is what happened to to us. This is where the OSR started. People were unhappy with third edition, and then definitely with fourth edition, and they said, you know, let's let's try the old stuff. Let's see what it's all about, okay? So that's what they did. Now. This started, just a brief intro to the OSR. First of all, OSR stands for Old School Renaissance, right? Uh, some people say Old School Revival. Some people say Old School Rules, but they're wrong. It's Old School Renaissance. I don't know where the hell they're getting that from. We never called it that, okay? It started around third edition. I think early the early days was third edition. People were sort of discontented. That was the... Uh, that was the origin of it. Now, there was always uh, some message boards, right? Remember those things? Message boards like EN World or N World is right now. There were always some message boards dedicated to old school games like Dragon's Foot, ODD 74. Um, they, they were always talking about the old school games and people were still playing the old school games, right? So what happened was when third edition came around, uh, some people weren't pleased with it and sort of near the end, especially as it got, you know, more and more splat books and whatnot, and then fourth edition. Oh God, no! So, so people sort of dove into um, the older editions they used to play, and they wanted to refamiliarize yourself themselves with it all. So they said, "Let's check this stuff out. Let's start, you know, looking things up on the internet. Try to find out who's still playing. How do you get back into games? This and that. This is, you know, this is maybe the early two thousands, and it really, uh, it really sprung up when fourth edition came out because it just sucked. That game just terrible. It wasn't even D and D. So people really got into it then. And then it moved from message boards to blogs. Okay. People started blogging about it as their experiences and and blogger for the most part. And this rediscovering the old games they used to play when they were kids. I don't know. We were all by what, 35, 36 in that general range, right? Mid 30s. And we said, let's get back into these old games we used to play. And so we talked about it, we blogged about it, and then it moved from the blogs to Google Plus. Um, that setup is no longer around, but that was great because it let us play together. Okay. It was in the early days of just playing online, roll 20 and other systems are slow, we're starting to, you know, get up to speed, but we didn't need too much. We had, a just a way to chat amongst ourselves and, and for free and, and group, group hangouts, you know, better than Skype because you don't have to pay for anything. Right. And so it was just a fun place to congregate and talk about things. Now, Matt Finch is the guy, I call him the godfather of the OSR. This guy, he, he's awesome, all right? He created I, <laughs> he created something called Osric, right? Because he says, you know, let's let's test this thing out. Let's, let's test out what we can possibly do with the open gaming license. Can we clone an older edition game? Can we put out, let's say, AD&D, right? And so uh, him and I think Stuart Marshall put out something called Osric. It's a game that cloned AD&D, old school rules index compendium or something like that, right? It was AD&D, basically, all the AD&D rules, all the rules, none of the fluff. You had the monsters, you had the uh, uh, the, the, the character classes, races, things like that, and, and basic rules for combat. And it was great. I mean, you could basically his goal was to be able to write ad and compatible modules without saying they're ad and compatible and, and violating copyright claims. Now, um, Chris Gonnerman also around the same time came up with basic fantasy role-playing, okay? That was another system that basically it kind of did the same thing. It, it went in a direction of let's let's make it a old school style game using some D20 rules. Castles and Crusades started to do the same thing around that time, all right? The, the Troll Lord guys, they're fantastic guys, really cool dudes. They started doing the same thing uh, with their Cosmos and Crusade system. So there was a few systems out there sort of, you know, popping around. And then before you knew it, you had a lot of clones, okay? But jumping back to Matt Finch, all right, he put out something. This is the best intro I could possibly give you to what the old school renaissance is. And he, he wrote this thing. It's called the uh, a quick primer for old school gaming, right? I highly recommend you guys go get this. This is the way to get started with old school gaming. It's the best way. Uh, my friend, Swords and Wizardry. All right. What it is, it's a breakdown, 13 pages long. It's a breakdown of 
the style of play, because this is the thing you guys are going to try to uh, sort of wrap your heads around. It's very, very different. If you've only played 5e or the newer games, it's a very different style of play than the, than the newer games. And he has four Zen moments is what he calls it. Right. And I'm going to go over some of them in brief here. The four Zen moments he talks about are if you could wrap your mind around these things, it's sort of like changing the way your brain works about role playing games. You will understand what an old school game is. OK, the first one ruling is not rules. OK, you're not using rules. You're making a ruling. Uh, again, he gets into how do you get that right? It's the referee, DM, uses common sense to figure out what happens or rolls a dice to see if there's some random element involved, and then the game moves on. You're not looking things up in the books. These are rules-like games for the most part, okay? So there's not a rule for everything. You got to trust the DM. You got to use common sense. Um, how do you disarm a trap? Instead of a skill check, you're looking at observing, thinking, experimenting, trying to figure out what can I do to get rid of this trap here, okay? So um, pit traps, Okay modern style i roll for i check for traps you roll a number roll a 15 uh blah 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 it's, it's, you know what i mean can i disarm it roll a number for that <laughs> it's it's boring right old school style a 10 foot wide corridor same setup right we poke the floor with a 10 foot pole um you don't have a 10 foot pole you fed it to the stone aisle can i see any cracks in the floor and they be shaped like a square um, then yes, you can, but uh, you may not be, he, it is there, but he may not be able to see it. So how about I take out my water skin? I'm going to pour some water on the floor and see if it absorbs or falls down, you know, things like that. I'm going to, I'm going to light some incense. I'm going to see if there's any airflow through the cracks in the rocks so that might give something away. Little things like that, right? This is the essence of old school play. You're, you're not relying upon your, what's on your character sheet to do something. You're relying upon um, your, your gut, your intuition, your player skill. All right. That is that is a big thing. Player skill. All right. And that's in fact, that's one of the next things here as I scroll down. Um, player skill, not character abilities. Right. So how good a player are you? All right. It doesn't matter that your, your guy has a six intelligence or an 18 intelligence. How good of a player are you? Can you figure out some ingenious way, some crazy thing, some, some idea out of the blue, stack this around here, stand up there, jump off of this, and let's see if it works. <laughs> Drop the net on it. Whatever, whatever it might be, figure something out. Think outside the box, right? Don't look at your character sheet. The biggest indicator of an old school player versus a new school player is when there's a situation comes up, and you see this in conventions or anything else all the time. Situation comes up as to okay, here is it. This is the thing in front of you. What are you going to do? New school players start pouring through the character sheets looking for they if they have a skill, ability, or gadget that gets them there. Old school players will just figure it out, right? Because it's a simple character sheet. There ain't much there. <laughs> You're not gonna have too much on it, okay? So again, player skill, not character abilities. Think outside the box. The third Zen moment, you, you're you a hero, you're not a superhero, okay? You're not invincible, you're Batman, you're not Superman. In fact, you're more like Robin, you're not even Batman yet. And, and at first level, you're a peon, you're a craphead, you're, you're nothing, <laughs> you can't do much. You can't, it basically, you're not more powerful than the average dude, you're not more powerful than you are in real life, you're not, you're not smarter, you're not better looking. It's what you can think about, what you can figure out, all right? You're not going to start at first level and get to fifth level within three sessions like like fifth edition does for you. You're, you're not going to accumulate abilities and skills and, and all this stuff to make you really, really awesome and powerful, okay? And then the biggest thing I think that he talks about is forget game balance. That is huge, all right? That is something that probably is the hardest thing for new school players to wrap their minds around is game balance, okay? Because when you're talking about game balance in fifth edition, it's all important. Third, fourth edition. Oh, you're breaking the game. Oh, this guy's more powerful than that guy. Oh, this new supplement. Oh, this new splat book came out and it, it really nerfs thieves or rogues and it makes wizards even more powerful now. And the next thing comes out and people are bitching about it the other direction, right? It doesn't make a difference. In old school games, you're not thinking game balance. You're, you're not, you don't care. I mean, you walk into a room and it might kill you your first level, or you might be able to kill it. You don't know. Sometimes you got to run your ass away. <laughs> Sometimes you got to get out of here. Okay. Um, the, the rules aren't fragile and the game doesn't collapse. If somebody makes a little mistake. Uh, if one character is more powerful than the others and, and if a counter is too hard, that's it. Sometimes the ref makes a bad call. They aren't tragedies. It, 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 don't let it screw the whole game up for you. Okay. You need to not get so damn attached to your character because in old school games, you can roll up a new one or five minutes flat 
don't get so attached to your characters. Some some people, <laughs> the old legend was they didn't even name their characters that they got their fifth or sixth level because it didn't make a damn bit of difference. <laughs> but it's, it's taking them to a bit of an extreme, okay? Now, here he has uh, some tips for players, and he also has some tips for the Game Master, okay? It's excellent. It's an excellent, excellent supplement, all right? I would highly recommend this, highly recommend this. This is a great way to get started. Um, the other thing is to go back and look at some old school blogs. Start with Tanker's Tavern, uh, tankerstavern.com, and <clears throat> he has a, a list of old school blogs that people have been talking about for years, and and, and posting on it for years, and you can get started there, and he gets a lot of news and information on there, okay? Uh, go to Dragon's Foot. That forum, believe it or not, is still around, okay? You can get onto Dragon's Foot and check out what people are talking about first, second edition on there. Now, what I wanted to do as well is give you guys sort of a book-by-book uh, -book comparison, because, again, I talked about the clones before, okay? Retro clones were started off with, like I said, Gonerman and... Uh, and Matt Finch with Osric and basic fantasy role play, and then Castles and Crusades came around. But there is pretty much a clone. By that I mean a, a a game system that is based upon an older game system that you 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 could buy for every game system out there. Okay, from from the original books, like you know, looking at Chainmail here, from these original books all the way up to you know through Second Edition. I'm going to show you the various systems and their clones. Right. So what you have here is where it started. Right. We had Chainmail. And we had uh, uh, fantasy, uh, fantastic miniatures rules, which of course led us over to the D and D. And I don't have the brown box, the little little white box or brown box, whatever the hell you want to call it. Those I don't have that because I'm not spending thousands of dollars. I got this printed out somewhere off the internet, some at some point many many moons ago, and uh, I, I printed them up and they're just you know Lulu or something like that. But they're they're great books. I, I wanted to have a copy of these original O D and D rules, right? And so the old D&D &D rules were just these three books, Men and Magic, Monsters and Treasure, and The Underworld and Wilderness Adventures. And the retro clone for this, okay, oh, actually, and then they came out with a few supplements, okay, four supplements. The retro clone for the base game is White Box, all right? That was put out by Swords and Wizardry. You can pick this up. It's the most basic of supplements out there. Now, if you're going to have, uh, this is just for the first three books. If you want a, uh, a, a clone for going back here, which includes the supplements, Greyhawk, Blackmar, Eldritch, Wizardry, and Gods, Demigods, and Heroes, all right? That's where you want to go to Swords and Wizardry Complete. That is the best supplement for ODD plus, uh, the clone for ODD plus all the supplements, okay? Pick that up. Matt Finch has that out right now. Uh, you, you can pick up, and there's a couple of versions. I have a nice box set. Um, it's really good too, but I like the bigger book because I'm old and has better print. <laughs> All right. Now here's a little shout out to Rob Connolly. Rob Connolly, this is a very, one of the very first OSR products I ever bought. Okay. He put it out a long time ago. The Majestic Wilderlands Supplement 6 is basically a supplement for compatible with Swords and Wizardry. Okay. For Rob's uh, Majestic Wilderlands game that he runs still to this day. I'm playing in his game right now. All right. In the city state of the Invincible Overlord. So Great, great supplement to get you an idea what his game is all about. More, more Rob stuff later. Okay, I just want to throw that in there because it's sort of a, you know, timeline-wise it fits. All right, next thing that was put out after od &D, this is the Holmes box set. Okay, uh, the, it's, you see the box on the left, and mine mine is all beat up. All these pictures are from my stuff, so excuse the uh, beaten upness of it all. Okay, so the Holmes box set, and this took you through from levels one to three. Okay, that's all it was. This is the, your first basic set. This was in my Eric Holmes, and it was supposed to be simplifying od &D, which was confusing as hell. All right, so he put this out, and it was simpler, but it was still confusing <laughs> compared to today's standards. Now, what you have now is that was Blue Home, the Prentice Rules and the Journeyman Rules. All right, thanks for uh, uh, turning me on to this. Uh, Sean, you know who you are? Uh, Shane, I'm sorry. <laughs> Shane, you know who you are. Um and Blue Home is, is really cool because it, it's it's basically homes reprinted in a better way. And Journeyman is takes you up to level 20. All right. So thank you, Shane Ward, for that one. Uh, let's see. Next, we have the BX sets of boxes. Okay. And so the basic on the left and on the right, you have the expert. So BX, basic expert. It took you like 14th level. They were a better printing of uh, the homes rules. They were they're simpler. Better understand, took you higher levels, okay? And so, oh, what am I going to do for this? Boom, the first one that came out. This was all the rage for a while, Labyrinth Lord. Um, he uh, he put out Labyrinth Lord a while, I think, uh, Proctor. 
he put it out a while back and everybody was playing it for a while because it was the best game out there. It was the best retro clone for a simple, basic game that there was. Okay. And then we have uh, something that came out a, a few years ago, old school essentials. Uh, Labyrinth Lord, he stopped putting out things, but he is coming out with a second edition of his book. I think he saw the potential that old school essentials put out. There's first of all, there's so many old school essentials types of books and compilations. There's the, the rule stone, the referee stone, there's the classic, there's the advanced, there's you know, there's the box set, there's the non-box set. You could you could have them all in one separate. Oh my god, there's so many different covers, it's insane. So take a look. Uh, my if in my opinion, get the advanced fantasy book, get the referee tome and the player tome, two separate books, and you're you're good to go. Okay. Um, but anyway, I think that Labyrinth Lord Proctor, uh, Dan Proctor says, you know, shit, there's a lot of money to be made here. I'm going to put out a second edition of Labyrinth Lord. So good luck to him. I hope he does well. But right now, Old School Essentials is all the rage for people who want a simple game system. Okay. Um, next, we have Beckme, basic expert uh, companion master and immortal Beckme, right? This was this was where I started actually. See, that's my actual red box. This beat the shit. You can't tell right here, but that thing has been taped up on the inside, on the outside. The box has been falling apart. We used it as a storage box for everything we had. So that it's 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 really cool. It's uh it's good. And if you move it along, they came up with the rules and like rules cyclopedia for Beckme after that, which is kind of cool. Um it's a compilation of all the rules, but less fluff, more crunch. All right. There isn't as far as I could tell, there is not a book. That is like a clone for Beck Me because most people who are playing who played Beck Me, they just scaled it back to old school essentials. It's kind of the same thing anyway. Beck Me just had more stuff. Now, the rule cyclopedia is a great place to, to look for all these weird little ass rules that you could add into old school essentials or Labyrinth Lord if you want to. Okay, so um it's it's you know weird, weird, stupid little things, and actually some some good stuff for the higher level game. So strongholds, fortifications, things like that. All right. So now, this is when D&D started, you know, it was on two different tracks. You had the AD&D game and you had the basic game. That's a whole different story. It had to do with payments and copyrights and fights between Gygax and Arnison and yada, yada, yada. You read the books about that. There's a few books and I'll talk about the history of it. But All right. Then next thing you have is AD&D. Now, this is what um, this is the first three original books, right? And this is where Osric came in because Osric was a clone of that. It had all three books in one, essentially, Stuart Marshall. I think Matt kind of wrote it. I, I don't know. Anyway, Osric has all three books in one, and it's fantastic. It, it, it's, it's just the rules, though. So if you just want to play AD&D, you know, you could buy the books or get Osric or get the PDFs. You could buy all the original stuff on Drive Through RPG. Um, they have a classic d d game books. Pretty much everything I'm talking about here you could buy. All right, either print on demand or the PDFs or both. All right. And then we have second edition, right? DMG, Player's Handbook, Monstrous Manual. There were some other books that came out at different printing, the 2.5, I call it, which is a different cover, but uh, different layout, shittier art. All right. In my opinion, the uh, the newer ones, they're all black covers and this and that. But here's what you want to avoid. See that Monstrous Manual? Buy that if you're going to get that. Don't get this piece of shit. All right, the Monstrous Compendium. This was some idiot's idea. They're going to say, hey, let's get a three-ring binder. That way people could, you know, we could put out supplements of various monsters, like the great, the Monsters of Crayhawk, the Monsters of Forgotten Realms, the Monsters of Crane, and people would just cram it in their Monstrous Compendium binder. What a goddamn mistake. The pages fell out. The binder was shit. Look, like everything's falling apart. It was a goddamn mess. I hate, I, it's, it's crap. And then if you're OCD like me, all right, they had everything was printed on two sides. So you had Bane Guard on one side, and and I don't know what is something else on the other side. But if you had a, a piece of paper from the Forgotten Realms Compendium, it broke your alphabetical order. It drove me nuts. You don't want to do that. All right, so it's crap. Buy the Monstrous Compendium. And here's some of the stuff, like the, the Greyhawk Adventures appendix, and you have to stick them all in, and then it's all screwed up. Oh god, it drove me nuts. Everybody hated them. I don't know anybody who liked those things. Maybe Rob did. Rob Connolly. He's, he likes things I don't like. Yeah, Lord of the Rings does suck, Rob. The new Lord of the Rings series. I'm sorry it does. Anyway, um, moving along. For Golden Glory is a 2E clone. All right? So it's a decent thing. It's a decent book. I use it because I'm going to start up a 2E campaign. That's going to be a lot of my videos coming up soon as I wrap up my 5E game and kick into high gear on this 2E campaign in about a month or so. I'm going to be talking a lot about that. Okay, I've been, been in overdrive on both things. I'm both finishing one up and setting up the other. So once I get into it, you guys are going to see a lot more content on the 2E thing. Okay, now moving along. Now, here's here's the basic fantasy role play. It's Gonerman's book. 
All right. So you can pick that up. This is the third edition of it. And Gaiman also put out another book called Iron Falcon. This is uh, he, this is basically a more it, it, it's closer to the BX rule set. Right. It's just basic classic, classic fantasy role playing. Really good. And there's a lot of supplements. You can pick them up online, Amazon or wherever. And they're cheap. His stuff is so by that. I mean, inexpensive, good quality, but inexpensive. All right. Here's some Cosmos and Crusade stuff. That's the first one I ever bought is on the right. They've done some, uh, a lot of revisions and, you know, I think they're on the eighth or ninth edition. Now the player, the newest one is on the left. I've recently over, over <laughs> the plague times instead of hitting the bars, I was buying a lot of, a lot of RPG stuff. And I really invest a lot in the CNC stuff. They're really good stuff. Troll Lords are some of the coolest guys in the industry. Buy stuff from them. If you can support them. Okay. Now here's the second wave of the OSR. Okay. Once we got past the clones, all right, this lunatic named James Ratchet <laughs> says, yeah, I'm, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to take these clones. I'm going to take the base, the Labyrinth Lord or whatever it was. And he says, I'm going to go crazy with this shit. I'm going to go heavy metal, punk rock, um, hardcore, grindhouse style RPG, horror, weird fantasy stuff, right? So he, he says... <laughs> He says, he says to me, I remember this still this day. He says, I'm going to make my own RPG. I'm like, what? Why? What are you going to do that for? You got your own, you got everything out here. I'm going to make my own because he's, he's ready. So he says, so he comes up with, with Lamentations of the Flame Princess, which is the name of an old heavy metal zine he used to have, I guess, right? And uh, I think he might have had a crush on her redhead girl at some point, like Charlie Brown, right? So this, he came up with the deluxe edition on the right first, and then the Grindhouse edition, a more brutal version. Um, yeah, some minor edits, things like that. But he took it in a different direction. I think I, I still think he was the first. I think he was the first to do this, to really take it somewhere else. He went from the clone movement into something using the clones. And, and that's just, this is what I call stage two of the OSR. He just used the clones and made something out of them that was new. Okay, so he just changed the, the face of the, the OSR back then. Okay, when he came out with this. Other people followed suit. Adventure Conqueror King. Alexander Makris, Tavis Allison, uh, Greg Tito, another system just like that, okay? A different style. Astonishing Swordsman and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. Now, the first edition of this was a, a couple, two different a player's handbook and a ref, I think, and they were spiral bound in a box set. This is the second edition. A third edition just came out, and Jeff, I can't wait to see mine. Um, I bought the really cool leather binding, nice foil thing one, and uh, that was on a special order, so it's finally coming in. I should have it within a couple of weeks, but everybody else has their third edition out already. So uh, you could pick up the third edition probably off his website. I think it's hyperborea.tv. All right, so I can't wait to see mine. It's a really cool book. It's basically if you take uh, take D&D, right, and take out the Tolkien and the re, uh, hyper-focus on Conan <laughs> and some little Cthulhu elements in there and uh, – and, uh, all the Ari Howard kind of style, basically, and Clark Ashton Smith and and all the Lovecraft stuff. That's what he did. All right. So you're not looking at hobbits. You're you're you're, you're looking at more Conan. And look at the art. I mean, this is just really cool. He keeps the style throughout his throughout even the third edition as well. All right. Dungeon Crawl Classics. This was big. This again. This is everybody saying, "I'm gonna I'm gonna do what Raji did. I'm gonna I'm going to make my own RPG based on the clones and take it in a different direction." This is Gonzo. This is you know. Dungeon Crawl Classics has the same sort of gonzo feel, craziness, and uh, the rules support that, okay? He even has crazy-ass dice. I was I was criticizing him when he came out with this because he, uh, he put out a rule system that uses weird dice that weren't the standard, you know, that we get in the standard dice array. It was like D7s, D5s, I don't know. I'm like, Jesus, man, don't put out the system without the dice. But he did, man, and, you know, we figured it out, and now the dice are out. So good for him. He make, he's making money, and I'm, I'm glad, Goodman. So he did a good job, all right? Joe Block, I'm going to focus a little bit on his stuff because everything that Joe Block puts out is good, okay? Um, from BRW Games, he decided, I'm going to take this in a different direction. I'm going to put out the second edition version of AD&D that Gygax always talked about. He scoured the internet for everything Gygax ever said about second edition, what his goal was for second edition. Because Gygax got canned before second edition came out from his own company, believe it or not. And so Joe says, I'm going to put out what I think he would have put out. Boom, Adventures Dark and Deep. So there's the three base books. Now, if you don't want to buy his system, what you can do is, uh, you can't see it here, but they have that orange cool spine from AD&D. The Book of Lost Beasts, that's all the new monsters. And the Book of Lost Lord, that's all his new classes and spells and everything else. So if you don't, if you want to just take 
the stuff that he did that's new and different and add it to your AD&D first or second edition game, buy these books, The Book of Lost Lore, Book of Lost Beasts, okay? And this is one I just bought. He just finished his Kickstarter, Swords of Cthulhu. I, that's a great book. Everything about it is good, and I am going to use it in my two-week campaign to screw with my players hardcore. All right. And uh, here's another thing I just wanted to throw out there. Again, all these books have an, an orange spine, all of Joe Block's books there. And so does this. Raphael Chandler put this out early in the OSR days. Evolved the Griffins and Grottos, EGG, the E. Gary Gygax, Teratic Tome. Teratic Tome is a book of monsters that are cool, imaginative, excellent, excellent book. I really like this book. Okay. RPG Pundit puts out a lot of stuff, all right? He took it in a different direction, too. Sword and Caravan, historical setting for OSR games by RPG Pundit. He has Dark Albion, The Rose War. And he also has stuff on uh, drive through you can pick up for a few bucks. An adventure here, a little supplement there for, you know, pick up a few bucks. And then I just, I don't buy those. I buy the uh, the, comp the companions, so the, the compendiums. So the old school uh, companion, Middle Evil, Evil Authentic, Tome 1, Tome 2, all the stuff you know, for old school games, right? He also has a, a Gonzo line. I think a Dark Sun Gonzo, I think something like that. Not my style, not into it. But I can tell you, pretty much everything he puts out is excellent, right? Lion and Dragon, Medieval, Authentic OSR role-playing. Now, Rob Conley, again, the Majestic Fantasy RPG, the basic rules. Now, Rob is, is hard at work putting out his own game, setting, monster book, everything. You're going to see a, I don't know when it's coming. I'm, I'm actually editing his stuff, so um, I'm on, I just spent a, a lot of time this weekend editing his uh, player's handbook. Um, he's going to have a DMG, a monster man, and a setting book, I believe. So look for that coming out. It's going to be really good. It's everything that he's ever blogs about on his Bat and Attic blog. Uh, it's, it's all comes together from his 40 plus year campaign that he's been running. So look for that coming up. Okay. I don't know when, maybe next year. Great Christopher, Ambition and Avarice. Okay. He put that out. Again, this is one of those, uh, one of those things where this is, this is the second edition, Ambition and Avarice too. He put out one a few years ago. And, you know, you put some out, you learn some more, you expand it, you grow. It's a really good system. He ran us through this for, I don't know, several months of campaign. It was fun. It's a great system. And the good thing about all these books is that you, you get them, you look through them, and you can pick and choose whatever you want, right? You like this table here. You like this chart there. Use it, man. That's all it is. It, again, game balance. Screw it. Doesn't matter. Pick it up. All right? For Coin and Blood, this is another thing. Uh, this is Alan Barr put out this book, and this is this is basically for Coin and Blood, an old school fantasy game with a twist, grimdark. All right, so you you picture old school essentials plus grimdark. That's Coin and Blood. So you're different, taking it in a different direction. Okay, and right, now we're getting into a few things that I think are just noteworthy. I was pulling all these things off my shelf, taking pictures on my drawing table there, and I'm like, I want to you know highlight a few cool things. Matt Finch put out this tome of adventure design. You guys, in the back of the AD&D &D, guy axes DM, DM guide, he has a lot of tables and charts, you know, room decorations, things you'll find in a in an alchemist lab, things like that. Matt Finch took that, added some steroids and crack to it, and wrote this massive tome of everything you could ever want. This is for DM prep ahead of the game. This is where you're writing your module. You're running out of ideas. You want some inspiration. You pull this out. It's really, really good. Everybody in the OSR is familiar and uses this, I think. Um, and Finch just put out a third edition of it. He just kickstarted it. Can't wait to get it. All right. I, I backed it. I got the PDF and I can't wait for this thing to come in the mail. It's a beast, a beast of a tome. All right. And again, tome of horrors. There's other things out there. There was the famously back in the day, uh, in the third edition, everybody was putting out things for third edition and monster manuals are out galore. So they put out this tome of horrors one, two, and three. And, uh, they put it they put it out for third edition, but this Tome of Horrors Complete is a monster, all three editions, all the monsters brought together in one book for old school versions, all right? Now, there's one thing to think about, guys, is when you're looking at monsters in old school games, you don't care about balance, especially with that. Like, you look at ghouls, Matt, you may have a type of ghoul in here that's more powerful than the standard ghoul in AD&D. &D. Who gives a crap? Nobody nobody cares, all right? Everybody should be on alert that there's the encounters that will not be balanced. You will not, <laughs> they will not be fair, <laughs> necessarily. Be prepared to run. You may have to negotiate or bargain or haggle. You might die. So play, play it cool. There's no expectation of it's going to work. Now, 
anybody worth the salt in the old school could take any monster, fifth edition or any edition, and scale it back to an old school game on the fly, and probably vice versa, right? We're used to doing that stuff. We've been doing it enough to know that it, the balance won't matter as much, and therefore, I'm just going to make this fun. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, bring a monster down, even though it's maybe a higher what you call CR and five E. It doesn't make a difference. So you could steal all these monsters from all these things and just throw them in. Okay. Um, Dungeon Alphabet. This is another awesome book that came out. This is, I think Goodman put this out. This is the third edition. Michael Curtis wrote this. And it's it's A, uh, let's see, uh, A is for apples, B is, <laughs> J is for jacks, apple jacks, blah, blah, blah. But he basically has every, every letter of the alphabet, like C is for cults, I think it was, and then F is for fountains. And there's like 20 or 50 or whatever different characteristics of fountains, right? And that, that's what you're dealing with here. So you, you have a, you basically an alphabet, an alphabetical listing of one thing, and then different characteristics you can use for each thing, all right? And it's really cool to have, it's like random tables of, of cool stuff, all right? And then there's one, a version for Cthulhu. Right, he just came out with which is really good too. I'm gonna have the Cthulhu element in my second edition game, so I'm gonna make use of that as well. Um, here's something I backed recently a Kickstarter Beastial Ecosystems, uh, Ecosystems by Courtney Campbell, I believe. And it's just nice. You look at this book and it's like a dryad, rumor, things that are known, rumors about them, uh, just, just cool stuff that you could drop as a, you know, not everybody knows everything about these things and what they do know, if they read the monster manual, you just change it up, right? And here's a bunch of different stuff that may or may not be true. There's different, you, you kill a dryad, you kill an owl bear. what they, what do they drop? What is their loot? Not, not I'm talking about gold and gems and magic items. I'm talking about off their body. Right. What 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 would the claws of an owl bear be worth to an alchemist? What he might be able to use that for? What you know, what the sage may want a feather of a of a cockatrice in order to write a certain kind of spell spell or, or, or something like that, right? It's like all these sorts of things in there that are just neat, neat stuff. Right. Here's other things, knock magazines, right? An old school gaming bric a brac. You guys think about reader's digest. Oh, well, if you don't, if you're as old as me, you know what they are. If you're not as old as me, you don't know what the hell it is. Just things you basically a big thick magazine with con, tons of articles about you know interesting stuff. I call it shit material. Reading material for when you're taking a shit, right? So knock magazine is the epitome of that. All right. Cool covers, like here, compelling arena fights. Uh how to make uh, arena fights interesting. This is just one quick article amongst hundreds but throughout these three magazines tables charts articles and a really nice layout okay really good stuff and we're back to the beginning there so guys bottom line osr is a style of play first and foremost that came out of discontent with older game system uh, newer game systems people went back to older game systems so there's a lot of you out there who were into the new game systems who may have heard about it don't know what it is or how to get started you now know the gist of it. You know where to get started. Get Matt Finch's old school primer. All right. You now know all the various iterations of D&D &D and the clones for them. All right. Go to Tankar's Tavern. Look at all the blogs that he has listed there. Read some people's thoughts about various aspects of old school games. Um, join some boards. Dragon's Foot ODD 7.4 are, are still out there. You know, and interact with some folks who are still playing and talking about this stuff. Old people, I, we're all welcoming, man. Everybody in the OSR welcomes new players because we like passing along our, you know, our love of the game to everybody else. And so we're, there's no, there's no judging. We're not a bunch of old assholes. And some of us are, you know, but <laughs> Jackson, but you know, none of, <laughs> he's old, <laughs> not an asshole. He's old, man. But so it's just a fun time. All right. J hop in. The, the, the water's nice. <laughs> just jump right in, learn about it, play. I would recommend if you're going to do it, easiest way to get into it, pick up Matt, uh, Matt Finch's old school primer, pick up uh, old school essentials, advanced fantasy, and just play a game. There's tons of games out there in Roll20. There's places to get pickup games, hop onto the Mibi groups. There's place uh, Facebook groups, all that. And just, just join a game. It's simple. It's easy. If you know how to play 5e, you definitely can pick up any old school game really, really fast. Okay. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, that's, that's all I got. About 35 minutes here. Um, any questions, leave it in the, uh, in, the, in the comments below. And uh, please, uh, if you like this video, hit the little like button, a little thumbs up. Subscribe. 
to my channel because I'm going to be putting out more stuff on old school games. I'm going to put, like I said, in about a month, I'm going to start that second edition game. So you guys can see what I do, how I do it. I already have a couple of videos about it and how I prep for it. And there's my next video is going to be uh, what I've been doing, you know, the past uh, couple months to get ready for it. So you'll see some, you know, some old school prep, how we do it. Okay. So hit like subscribe, share this thing around there and uh, hope you guys stick around for my next video. Thank you very much and have a great one, everybody.